In this short video, we're going to take a look at interfaces in Java. Interfaces specify relationships between classes without using inheritance. So here is an example. We have an interface here called the point interface, and the point interface can have a, a bunch of methods in it, and, and we just declare the, the signature of those methods. It can also have other things besides methods, but uh, the main thing that uh, they're used for usually is for a, a method interface. So uh, here's an example of a, of a particular method, the move method, and it takes some arguments and has a particular return type. Now any other class, or any class, excuse me, that's going to implement the point interface has to provide a method uh, with the same signature. So, this, so because the point interface has a move method, the point uh, class will have to have a move method with the same signature as the move method in the declared interface. And if the point interface had other methods, uh, then the point class would also have to implement those methods by you know, having a method of the same name uh, with the appropriate types of arguments and result. Now it says in the Java language manual that Java programs can use interfaces to make it unnecessary for related classes to share a common abstract superclass or to add methods to object. And the translation of that is that interfaces play the same role as multiple inheritance in C++. So interfaces uh, are really analogous uh, to, to multiple inheritance. And the reason for that is that a, a class can implement multiple interfaces. So if I have a class X and it implements, say, three interfaces A, B, and C, this means that an X object can be treated as an A object, a B object, or a C object in the appropriate context. So it's like, or almost as if, X had three superclasses, A, B, and C. Now, uh, there are some important differences, uh, but that is the effect. And so if I want to have a class that gets functionality or implements the functionality of several uh, uh, interfaces, that's something you can do very directly in Java just by saying that the class is going to implement all of those interfaces. Now here's an example of an application of that. So think about a graduate student uh, working at Stanford or some other university. So uh, typically graduate students are students, okay, so they take classes and have uh, all the properties that students uh, have. They get degrees and grades and things like that. But graduate students also typically work for the university. They often are teaching assistants in classes or hold research assistantships. And so, so they have another role, which is a university employee. And if I have gone to a lot of trouble uh, in my uh, university uh, personnel management software to implement functionality to deal with students and to implement functionality to deal with employees, well, then I would like to make use of that when I get around to thinking about how I'm going to implement uh, the functionality for graduate students. And one way to do that would be if I had a class that implemented, if I had, excuse me, an interface for employees and an interface for students, then I would say that a graduate student could be both, okay? So a graduate student can implement both the employee interface and the student interface. And, and the reason that this is a good idea is that it's actually hard to do this if uh, you only have single inheritance. If you think about it, if I had set things up so that I had some employee classes and some student classes and now I want to implement graduate student, well, what am I going to do? Well, if I have my employee class, I can make grad student a subclass of that, but now how do I get the student functionality? And similarly, if I have a student class, I can make graduate student a subclass of that, but now how do I get the employee functionality? So in single inheritance, you're forced to choose a single class to inherit from. And the advantage of interfaces is they will let you get functionality or implement functionality or express the relationship, at least, of functionality to multiple kinds of things. And so I can have one uh, graduate student class that implements both the employee and the student functionality. So how are interfaces different from inheritance? Well, probably the biggest difference is that it's not possible to implement interfaces as efficiently as inheritance, and that's why you have both. So you prefer to use inheritance uh, if you can because it's going to be more efficient than interfaces. And what makes interfaces less efficient? Well, the primary thing is that the classes implementing interfaces need not be at fixed offsets. In fact, we will not be able, in general, uh, to assign methods in interfaces to fixed offsets inside of a class implementation or an object implementation. 
So let's take a look at an example. Here's our point interface again. And now let's say we have one class point. We saw this one before that implements the point interface. And it implements the move method, has to implement the move method. And then we have another class that also implements the point interface, but it also implements some other stuff. Okay, so it might implement you know, some other methods that aren't part of that interface. So now, how would we decide you know, where to put the move method? Well, the natural thing that we've, uh, that we've discussed uh, in our implementation, say, of cool C, is that the methods uh, would be laid out in the order in which they're declared. And so if we did that, clearly the move method will not be uh, in the first position in both of these classes. Now, we could imagine a, a separate compiler pass that would try to sort the methods so that, say, all the methods of the point interface always appeared in the same position in the same order in any class that implements the point interface. But that doesn't work as soon as we have um, multiple interfaces being implemented. So let's say the point two class here implemented another interface A, all right? And we'd already decided uh, that the, for the point interface that the move method should go first. It should be the first method in the class well, if we had made a similar decision for the A interface, you know, some method in that interface that should always be listed first in the class, then we would have a conflict. And in general, there's no total ordering we can give to all the methods and all the interfaces so that they can be maintained across all of the uh, classes that implement those interfaces. At least there's no total order that we can give without having to know in advance all the classes that are declared and all the interfaces that are declared. And that's kind of un-Java in that we don't want to uh, force people to declare all the classes and interfaces once and not be able to extend them in the future. All right, so the bottom line is that methods uh, in interfaces do not live at fixed offsets in classes. So uh, how can we then implement interfaces? Well, so it's gonna be a little more complex than usual to implement a dispatch, say, to a method F uh, where E has some interface type. So if E uh, has a, is a, you know, type of some, if E is typed as having some interface and now we're calling it the F method of that interface, then we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. And so here's one approach. This approach is actually quite inefficient, uh, but you can see that it will work and there are, and there are other approaches that are, that are more efficient, but that's not particularly important. But here, so here's one way that can work. So each class that implements an interface is going to have a lookup table associated with it that maps method names, the string names of methods, to those methods themselves. And then uh, we can hash the method names for faster lookup and we can actually compute uh, those hashes at compile time. And so the idea would be that if when we have an object, uh, somewhere in the object, probably at the dispatch pointer, the dispatch pointer you know, will point off to a list of methods, sort of the normal methods of the class, but somewhere, say maybe at the end of the dispatch table, there'll be another pointer to some kind of lookup table that maps names to, to methods, to code, okay? So somehow, associated with every object of every class, uh, we will have this lookup table that will map uh, the, the names of uh, interface methods to the actual code for those methods that implements them.